of the Mondial car is that of a thoroughbred. It's a purpose-built racing car powered by a 1600cc double overhead cam Ford engine and develops about 220 brake horsepower. When Terry goes to work at the office, it's purely business. No elbow room in there. Super direct steering, taco, stumpy and hard to use right hand gear lever and a bunch of controls to alter brake and suspension settings whilst actually in the car. The gap between you and the road is scary and the driver's eye view, spectacular. So that's Formula Mondial, Australia's Formula One. I hope you're going to enjoy these pictures from Terry Ryan's car. They should be fascinating. In fact, the car's ready to come out and here's Mike Raymond. Thank you, Neil Crompton. And the car's on the track now for the Victoria Trophy, round one of the Camps Australian Drivers' Championship. Here's how they'll line up. From one is Peter Hopwood in car number 22. From two, car six, Richard Davison. From three, car nine, Graham Watson. From 483, Brett Lana. From five is Terry Ryan with our race cam. From 674, Chris Hocking. From position number seven, Matt Romano. From eight, Peter Boylan. From nine, Brian Sampson. From 10 is Brett Fisher. From 11, John Beasley. And from position number 12, Gordon Doby. Full half second between the top two qualifiers here. Peter Hopwood qualifying at 137.8. Richard Davison alongside him in the front row, 138.3. Drivers with their eye on the starter, 10 seconds. Peter Hopwood in the Menage car, ready to go. Flag is up. They're racing and they get away to a good start. And on the outside, Richard Davison got away brilliantly. Hopwood goes with him on the inside as they head down to the first with Panda. And uh, Hopwood keeping the pressure on, but he's uh, lost the battle to the first corner. Well, what a sensational start from Davison. Hopwood getting carted off the circuit as they come down to the first right-hander. And it looks like it may be Lana who's come through in the lead. Davison in trouble, so the two leading drivers from the front row of the grid have both taken one another out. And I think Graham Watson has snuck into second place. Sensational first quarter incident there between Hopwood and Davison. I couldn't quite see whether they in fact came together, but Hopwood certainly off the course, couldn't take the shortcut because cars were streaming through in front of him. And Hopwood is mobile once again in last position, coming along the motorcraft back straight as the leaders go now to this left-hander. Far sweeping hairpin in fourth gear in the Rolf. There's car number 74, Chris Hocking. A full field of these Rolf RT4 cars built in England by Ron Turinac, the former partner of Jack Brabham in their World Championship quest of a number of years ago. And Brett Lana, car number 83. Well, behind Hopwood and Davison on the grid, the next uh, four, Watson, Lana, Ryan and Hocking, there was nothing to choose between them on qualifying time, so this has thrown this race wide open. Terry Ryan was well positioned. Uh, up to about uh, fourth at this stage of the race as they come out down towards uh, Dunlop and past the pit area. So uh, with the race, uh, the front row of Hopwood and Davison having problems, uh, as Gary said, the race is wide open and they've got a long way to come back from. 20 laps the journey and Brett Lana getting just out into the grass as he came onto the front straight. There's a slight left-hand kink and then it's through third, fourth and then into fifth. And oh. round goes one of the cars. That's Brett Fisher in car 13 from Sydney. Almost a repeat of the Keki Rosberg incident. Long where he grabs first gear and continues. Let's pick up on our race cam in Terry Ryan's car as they head down the front straight. Here's what it's like behind the wheel with our new seven race cam. Terry Ryan at the wheel. Coming up to Castro, the left-hander for the run out to Motocraft. He actually has gone back into first gear coming out of there. There's a strange shaped uh, pattern in these things. You can see the short stumpy little gear lever off to the right hand side. Terry now in fifth gear and literally with his backside about three inches off the road. Great shots from this seven technology race camp. Gently on the power as he comes out of the turn. He seemed to get a pretty ordinary sort of a start. The car bogged down away from the line. Yesterday he had some problems with the electrical circuit in the car occasionally misfiring but it sounds quite clean now Gary. Yes so it does. Tight twisting part of the circuit at the back of the Sandown course over by the Dandenong roadside and you can see those snappy gear changes Neil Crompton was talking about as uh, Terry Ryan goes through this part of the course. Dog leg coming up and then that'll bring him back onto the main straight and it's a long long run down past the start finish line here at Sandown fighting the wheel as he goes round and under the uh, Dunlop Bridge gone back to first to second to third now to fourth across to the top right hand side back another gear quite different shots from those that we get in dick johnson's mustang you can see how direct the steering is in a rolled rt4 now opens up the taps about 220 brake horsepower the taco will be peaking at just on 10,000 rpm 
And at the moment, this man that we're looking at in third position and not too far from the back of car 74, Chris Hocking. You can see the yellow car closing up now under brakes. That was sensational stopping from Ryan. Now, can he get oh. second? He's hit the car. He ran into second place, Chris Hocking. Caught his back wheel. Well, what's that done to the front end of the car? These things are extremely sensitive. Oh, and the front wheel locks up as now Hocking regains second place. He grabs first, the car over revs as he tries to put power to the ground. Another car goes through, he drops back to fourth place. This is the sort of frustration that a racing driver doesn't enjoy. It's Graham Watson up into third place in the second of the yellow machines going through there. There's Ryan. Goodness me, things were going so well for him. We can see the there. coming out from underneath the vehicle, so he's obviously done quite serious damage to the vehicle. Graham Watson now up into third place in car number nine in the Ignis entry. He's the importer of these cars in Australia and it would appear as though Terry Ryan is in trouble. The car's still circulating but now a long way back in fourth, now fifth, now sixth. Here's a replay of the incident. They came round through the left-hander at the end of the straight. He tried to go underneath Hockey but caught the rear wheel. Almost completely broke away the front right-hand side of the car. That would have done severe damage to the suspension and you can see that the car was dragging. Look at the front wheel now limping, lazy Barely touching the ground, in fact. And they're the type of pitches that uh, our American viewers uh, on the American Broadcast uh, Company. Uh, coverage of the Indianapolis 500 are going to see. And you can recall when the race comes up at the end of May, the first pioneer run by our race camp, of course, was here at Sandown. And what an action-packed ride we had for a couple of laps, of course, with uh, Terry Ryan. Look at the way the front of the car is bent. Oh. Number two coming up onto the back there is John Beasley in an 81 series roll. And Terry now indicates for the field to go through. And it turns out to be a very disappointing day in this very professionally appointed team. They look really good. He qualified extremely well. And in the meantime, our leader, Brett Lana, doing this very nicely in car number 83. Hitting down the motorcraft back straight. And haven't had the opportunity to put the stopwatch on, but I would suggest the gap now is well in excess of 10 seconds. But the gap between second and third is not so wide and I would say that Hocking and Watson would have a, a quite interesting dice before the chequered flag. Three and a half laps gone in this race for uh, the race leader, Brent Lana, doing it well. Ahead of uh, Chris Hocking, Graham Watson. Oh, well, what a race of sensations. Hopwood and Davison off the front row of the grid, both out of the, well, not out of the action, but back in the pack after an incident at the first corner. Tremendous pictures from uh, race cam and Terry Ryan's car before that unfortunate incident where he clipped the rear wheel of Chris Hocking's car and that's put him out of action. That's all happening here in the Victoria Trophy for the Formula Mondiales at uh, Sandown today. I don't think any of us are game enough to uh, try and pan ahead to maybe who will be victorious in this trophy. But the front row going out the window uh, due to uh, bad starts by Peter Hopwood and Davison coming uh, together run down of course to Castro for the first time there's our race leader and you can see the gap that he's opened up over the rest of the field it is clear daylight four laps completed as he passes the start finish line Brett Lana and there in pursuit Chris Hocking and uh, Graham Watson quite a battle going on between that pair in fact as they come down to that uh, sharp corner this is where Hopwood uh, met trouble on the first lap these two are having a great scrap. Brian Sampson in uh, fourth place, followed by Pat Romano, Romano having his first run in a roll, having driven the Kadicha last weekend at Amaru Park. We mentioned at that meeting as we look at this magnificent battle between Watson and Hocking. Hocking looking at his mirrors on the right hand side as Watson goes through. Two yellow cars side by side. Who's the bravest under brakes? And it's Watson who takes second placing. As I said before, Watson is the importer of these vehicles into Australia and a real enthusiast of open wheel racing, regularly treks across to New Zealand. Hocking comes back once again and tries to dive underneath in his right-hander. A deceptive corner, a corner that drops away from the driver quite considerably. The dice for second place continues. Graham Watson in car number nine has moved out into second. Chris Hocking, not that far behind, held second uh, the short spell. Brett Lana, though, still continues to lead this race. 
and daylight between first and second at this stage. And just checking the positions of Hopwood and Davison who got tangled up there in the first lap, Mike. Uh, Davison's made up a few places, now back running seventh, but Hopwood uh, appears to be content to circulate at the rear of the field. He's not going to bust the car to try and catch the pack. Well, there's also the possibility that there is some damage to the car as well, much like, I guess, Ryan's car, because it took a fair whack in the side. This is the battle, as we said, for uh, second and third. Watson and Davison. All wrought RT4s in this race bar one car. Taz Talbot driving a car of his own uh, design and manufacture, a Talbot 184. We mentioned Bamp Romano, whom we've seen driving exotic uh, sports cars, the uh, Romano Cadiccia, of course. He's also competing in this race today in uh, car number eight, currently running in fifth place on the racetrack. And, uh, we'll take a look at his style very shortly. As Watson and Davison go through again, there's the race leader up ahead of them, Brett Lana. Really uh, had a great opportunity presented to him with that first lap tangle. He's making the most of it. Graham Watson in second place at the moment. Red Lana ahead of him on the road. And in fact, I think Watson may be gaining just slightly on uh, the race leader. He's come from behind. He was running in uh, fourth spot. He's made it up as at the moment. In fact, you hear it in the background? Yeah, it sounds terrible. Yeah, like a sharp cutter. And Bap Romano now is closing rapidly as well in car number eight. So he looks like he could uh, move up to third place before this race ends. That's if Peter Boylan doesn't get him. Very bad luck here for Chris Hocking, who's campaigned Formula 2 cars for a long time successfully and done a little bit of Formula 1 racing. Was looking good for a, for a great result here today. But the thing, as you can hear in the background there, has gone very sour. Well, the engine's off, and I don't think it'll be too long before he is. The... Other cars are closing uh, rapidly on him at this stage. He's probably got about 200 metres protecting that spot. Davison, though, has had the drive of the race so far. Chris Hocking going down through the infield loop area. We'll wait to see whether or not he goes in the pits or continues. Just trying to pick up championship points at this stage. It could be uh, a little expensive in the, uh, in the engine department, Neil. Certainly the uh, amount of money that these guys have got invested in these cars and the amount of problems that a few of them have had today. Just looking through the field, there's the leader, Graham Watson, Hopwood and Davison coming together on lap one and Hopwood coming off the worst for wear and now struggling at the back of the field. Davison has managed to regain some territory. He appears to be up into uh, second. Uh, Terry Ryan, who is carrying Seven's race cam, climbed all over the back of the car and managed to break the front suspension in his car. He's out of business. Brett Fisher went round a couple of times in a spin, had more problems, broke the wing off his car. He retired to the pit area. Brett Lana had trouble with his car. He's gone through to the rear of the field. And now Chris Hocking with a misfiring car as we had a glimpse there of Hopwood's car. So virtually half or more than half of the field is in big trouble. Coming up with just over one lap to go, race leader, car number nine, Graham Watson, doing it well and well clear now. Richard Davison holding down second place in car number six, car 74, Chris Hocking clinging to uh, third place at this uh, moment, just ahead of Bamp Romano. In fact, that has now changed. We've got Romano followed by Boylan and Hocking out of business. The bad luck indeed for Hocking. Looked like uh, he had the race locked up earlier. Graham Watson. So Hocking dropping back into fifth placing and I doubt whether he'll even survive there for very long. On his there, last Mark. lap. Just recapping the order again as we try and sort through this maze of did not finish results and, and incidents. We've got Graham Watson leading in car number nine from car number six, Richard Davison from car eight, Bat Romano in the pie entry and in the all black car, car number seven, Peter Boylan. Well judged race driven by uh, Graham Watson 
bit of hopwood in the pits in the Menage car. So fastest qualifier, the man favoured to win the race, but put out of action basically on the first corner. Limped around since then, but uh, he's not going to see the checkered flag. Chief mechanic Neil Stevens on the front right-hand side of the car. He'll be disappointed. They've worked on the car for about a month to get it ready for this race meeting. And it's Graham Watson who brings home the bacon. He'll get nine points with car number nine in the Inca Century. Great start for him. Only a very small, very light driver, perfectly suited to these vehicles. He heads down towards uh, Dunlop, past the pits. And Graham Watson, the man who has been right behind the introduction of uh, Monheal Racing to Australia for good reason up a lot of uh, road cars here as well they come out of the last corner down the long finishing straight here at Sandown checkered flag and, left of screen and the checkered flag waits for Graham Watson and he will take the Victoria Trophy round one of the Australian Drivers Championship for 1986 pretty good effort as we said and uh, what a great effort by Richard Davison as well in car number six who uh, is going to take second place